tuning into another video it's frankie today as you guys see in the title of the video we're going to be installing custom made led hexagon uh, lights onto the kia optima 2015 sxl now you could do this to a 2011 to 2015 it would still work because the headlight unit is the same this is very easy i recommend everybody to do it i would not recommend you to pay 1000 to 2000 to 3000 for somebody to make them custom for you because it's very easy to do it might seem a bit difficult because there's no videos on it and i think i'm the only guy who's ever made a video on this so uh i'm gonna go in depth on how to do it because it's not that difficult probably the most difficult part is removing the bumper to me in my part because i already did one i'm gonna show you guys right now Alright you guys, as you guys can see, I installed some LED hexagon rings. You can install any type of lights on here, like the rings or the ones that are primarily for the Kia Optima. I chose to do the hexagons because I have yet to see anybody have these on their vehicle, especially for an Optima. I've seen them on a couple Subarus. BMW has that nice design, but I wanted to try it on my car. If I don't like it, I could do something else, but as of now, I'm really a fan of it especially because it's very unique all right you guys enough of my rant let's get started first thing first after removing the bumper you got to remove this two bolts here one right here and one right here and then after that is just a little clip right down here this one right here as well as this one right here that will remove your head unit i've seen people take these off without removing their bumper but i want to do it the safest way possible without breaking anything just like this one here because this one did break but not because of me the previous owner when they're trying to remove the headlight or a mechanic, they broke the clip. After removing the bolt that goes in here, as well as the light bulb here, the covers that go here and here, and there's gonna be a light uh, screw that goes right there as well. Computer system right here. It's ready to be placed inside the oven at 250 degrees for 10 minutes. And then after that, it should be very easy to pry off. But what I do recommend is getting a table, something that you can work on and putting a giant blanket or cloth or anything under so that you don't scratch these lights because they are really easy to scratch. And you don't want to do everything and then have this all scratched up and looking ugly. So let's get to it. I do recommend working with some rubberized grip gloves that way it can make the process much safer and easier for you because you are going to be handling some delicate headlights you don't want to have any scratches and after you remove from the oven you're going to need some gloves and i have these i got these at walmart for like four bucks and they work just fine all right once the oven's ready sorry if i look funny my neck's a little messed up from yesterday i was working out and my neck hurts i think i strained a nerve or something but once the oven is heated up to the proper temperature then you could place your headlight inside. Just be careful not to scratch it. In the meantime, what you could do is play some video games or do some Warzone. What I'm gonna do is prepare my bucket. So. What I'm actually going to do to my headlights is black them out as well, delete all the chrome that's inside. So one way to do that other than painting it is what I recommend. Purple Power Concentrated Industrial Strength Cleaner and Degreaser. Now you could use any other brand. This is the only one I had access to. There's Zep. Zep I think is much stronger and works way faster. But you're going to need one of these and a disposable bucket because these are going to be very strong chemicals. You're not going to want to be touching them with your hands. You're going to want to make sure you have gloves on. So I poured it in there. I recommend two for a bucket this big or else the whole thing's not going to fit and the process is going to be way longer. Now, if you're not going to want to black out your headlights like mine um, and you're just going to leave everything inside the same without painting it, then you could fast forward. But what I'm going to do is black them out because I, I really like the way it turned out. I hate chrome and the way I did it, came out really good and it makes it look almost OEM. As you guys can see, there's supposed to be chrome in there as well as here and the rings are supposed to be chrome. 
as well as this here but because of that chemical it removes all the vaporized chrome that's on those plastics because the original color of the plastics are those so these are not painted they're just removing the chrome that is vaporized on from the, their machines and it makes it look oh yeah All right, you guys, you're gonna wanna set this part aside. You're not gonna wanna black this out because this is a reflector chrome. That's what makes your high beam strong. If you black them out, there's gonna be no reflection in order for it to stick out. And you're not gonna wanna mess around with these or touch them. Let me show you guys. Because you don't wanna add any fingerprints or anything that's gonna cause it to not perform at its brightest state. Once you have everything taken apart and you got all the chrome bits that you want to have blacked out, now we could dip it inside of the bucket. I got everything blacked out that I need. As you guys can see, I already took them out the bucket and I tinted these out. Looks OEM plus. Looks very clean. Came out very good as you guys could see. All right, now this is where the fun begins. You have to mark up exactly where is dead center. What you're gonna wanna do is put this headlight unit on top of that and have it where it fits exactly perfect where the ring and this is centered right in the middle. As you can see, there's gonna be a little gap on the top. Nothing you could do about that except unless you shave it up there, but I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna leave it this way. What I am gonna do is fish wire tie here and this top end here. And then after that, drill a hole so I can run the wires through the top and do the same thing on the other side. What I do recommend also is using epoxy and connecting it here and this end here. And the back side has double tape, which I'm gonna connect to this part here. This line on the bottom has a little bit of an area where you could connect that double-sided tape. I have it all mocked up on the location I want. I have a dead center here and as well as here. So what I did, I drilled two holes here and another one up there connected with fish wire tied up. That way I have extra, you know, strength from the epoxy bonding. If you guys are wondering what I use, I use this epoxy, clear epoxy. It does turn yellow though. So you want to make sure you, you know, wipe it off. For example, I had some come off of here when I squeezed it down. So I got a cotton swab and I wiped it off just to make sure because you don't want to have that yellow haziness and looking ugly when people get close to it. All right, so the one I'm using is this one right here, Henry's Wet Patch Extreme Rubberized. I'm using this to fill the gap in which uh, I removed the headlight unit. So I don't want to have any air leaks or any type of condensation going in my headlights so I'm putting some extra of this. What I'm gonna do is reinsert some glue in here. All inside, put some new glue and squish it back in, put it in the oven for another 10 minutes at 250 and then press even more and that should be pretty much it. All right, so one thing I would suggest is not drilling a hole onto the casing. What you can use are these air release components that they have already installed. You remove this rubberized area right here and you can feed the wire through here. And then you just replace this back inside. And this is a breather hose, so it prevents any condensation or any water that gets in there so it could evaporate.
All right, you guys, so I got the headlights placed back in. As you guys can see, I didn't want to show you guys that process because it's very easy. If you guys took them out, you can put them back in. But as for the wiring, what I did, I put the Bluetooth receiver right down here. I connected it to ground on uh, one of these bolts over here. And as for the power, I spliced one of the brown cables that are mainly for the DRL lights and that gives enough power for all four LED lights. Just run the wiring underneath this, fairly easy. Now I'm gonna go find a good spot in which I could go show you guys how the headlights look. guys that's gonna be it for today's video if you guys did enjoy please smash that like button and subscribe it really does help it motivates me to continue making more videos because I don't make a profit from it I don't get anything other than motivation when you guys hit that like and subscribe and if you guys did enjoy please make sure to share and comment down below if you guys are gonna do this modification to your car too that's gonna be it for today you guys be different and stay safe okay peace